Now risk management in banking. Risk management in banking is theoretically defined as the logical development and execution of a plan to deal with potential losses. So theoretically speaking, risk management in banking it is nothing, but we have to have a logical development and execution of a plan in order to reduce potential loss of a bank. Now in a general sense, if I ask you, what is the risk involved with a bank, any kind of bank? What is the risk generally they expose? What kind of risk bank exposes? Yes. What kind of risk bank exposes? Risk it is uh, in respect of deposit because uh, people uh, they deposit money with the bank and sometimes bank becomes insolvent. And then people, investor, they blame bank management. So is it that risk or sometimes bank, not sometimes, but always bank sanctions loan to industry, individual, and uh, there are some borrower who do not pay on time. They become default. So is it that kind of risk? What it is? What do you think? What is the risk exposed by a bank? Any one of you? What is the risk exposed by a bank? Yes, please. What kind of risk bank exposes? Have you opened your bank account? Or the nationalized bank? Have you opened your uh, saving account with bank? Am I audible? Hello? Can you hear me? So, uh, have you opened a bank account with bank? Do you have a bank account? Okay. Uh, which bank? Bank of Bhutan. Bank of Now, when you have opened your account with Bank of Baroda. So you have kept some amount with bank. Okay. Whatever amount, maybe in your saving account or you might have opened fixed deposit account also if possible. Now, as a account holder, now you are account holder of Bank of Baroda. So I am just asking you as an account holder, what kind of uh, risk you feel that Bank of Baroda exposes. How long you have opened your account? How long? Six months back or uh, two years back? When did you open account with Bank of Baroda? When did you open? Uh, 
Yes. When you open bank account, six months before or one year before or five years before, when? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, pardon me. I could not listen. How many years? One year. How many years? One year. One year. So, last one year, have you realized that Bank of Baroda ex exposes to any risk or uh, you haven't realized? What is your experience? Now, risk management in banking, it is theoretically defined as the logical development and execution of a plan to deal with potential losses. Now, whenever you, we study risk management in banking, it is nothing but the logical development and execution of a plan to deal with potential losses. Now, what is potential loss? Whatever loan, say for example, Bank of Buroda has given to industry in the form of cash credit, bank overdraft, working capital, loan, etc. And then Bank of Bododa might have given loan to the individual, like say home loan, vehicle loan, education loan, personal loan, and so on. So there are various types of loans for industry as well as individual. Now here what happens? Suppose if Bank of Bododa has given to uh, individual loan, say 500, uh, 5 lakh people, 5 lakh people have taken loan from Bank of Baroda. Now here, certainly all 5 lakh people will not pay on time. I am not saying that all will not pay. Some, most of the people will pay definitely, but all will not pay on time. Are you agree with this? All 5 lakh people will pay on time to the Bank of Baroda. Do you think so? Suppose Bank of Baroda having their branch in Pune city, say in Shivajinagar area, Bank of Baroda branch is there, and in Shivajinagar area, they have distributed loan to 5 lakh of people. So, can you <coughs> think that or do you, can you give me guarantee? that all 5 lakh people who have taken loan from Bank of Buddha will pay their installment EMI on time. Will they pay? Yes, sir. All 5 lakh people will pay on time loan installment. 100% people. All 100% people will pay their EMI on time? Actually, the answer is all people will not pay. There are some cases, maybe 2% cases, 5% cases. They will default. Default means they will not pay EMI to bank or they may delay. They will pay, but they may delay. And some people, they will not pay because of their uh, personal issue. Some problems are there. So they are not paying. So that may happen. That may happen. So here, with potential loss. So this is the potential loss. Potential means what? 
फ्यूचर इस्टिमेटेड लॉस फ्यूचर लॉस पोटेंशियल मीन्स इस्टिमेटेड लॉस वॉट एवर लोन बैंक ऑफ बड़ोदा हैज गिवन टू फाइव लैक पीपल टू और थ्री परसेंट पीपल मे नॉट पे सो दिस इज नथिंग बट द पोटेंशियल लॉस टू द बैंक नाउ Usually, the focus of the risk management practices in the banking industry is to manage an institution's exposure exposure to losses or risk and to protect the value of its asset. Now, whatever loan given by Bank of Baroda to the industry or uh, individual, it is the asset of a bank. It is what it is asset of bank. Loan given by bank to the customer, it is asset. and deposit taken from a customer by bank it is liability because in future time bank will have to repay that de deposit amount so that is why it is liability and uh, why loan is asset because bank has given loan to the individual and industry and in future bank will recover principal amount as well as interest amount not only principal but interest also interest and principal will be collected from individual and uh, uh, companies so that is why it is their, their asset now protect the value of assets now here bank will protect the value of asset whatever loan to industry and individual given by bank bank will see that how to protect that asset that no one should a uh, default no one should delay everybody should pay on time so that 100% effort will be put up by bank now what are, what kind of effort now before they sanction loan to the borrower so they will have a scrutiny of their uh, financial performance of a person financial status they will uh, get the information about financial status of person or financial status of company Maybe last three four year balance sheet. If you are talking about individual, say last three years return filed by individual to the income tax department. On the basis of that return, bank will come to know what is the regular income of this person has, and then bank will also come to know whether this person has defaulted any loan to any other bank. So even that also reflects. If you give your uh, uh, PAN card and uh, this information. Uh, Aadhaar card number. On the basis of that, bank can find out this information. Suppose if you are taking loan from, say, Bank of Maharashtra, and now you are taking loan from Bank of Baroda, so Bank of Baroda will take advice from Bank of Maharashtra that Mr. X Y Z he is uh, approaching us for loan. So please provide his uh, history. So that history can be collected by. Bank of Baroda from Bank of Maharashtra, and this way they come to know about the person whether the person has attitude to pay on time or he has defaulted. If he has defaulted, then the next bank will be cautious. Cautious means they will hold the application of uh, borrower. They will not sanction immediately. now what is the next step how long they will uh, hold their application then uh, bank will have some strategy what strategy bank will uh, play with that uh, person bank will ask simply can you hypothecate something against your loan now you are asking loan from our, from us yes we are ready to uh, provide you loan but you have to give some hypothecation what do you mean by hypothecation what is hypothecation anybody knows what is hypothecation what is hypothecation what is hypothecation am i audible hello can you hear me can you hear me yes what is hypothecation do you know the meaning of hypothecation hypothecation
Are you aware what is the meaning of hypothecation? Hypothecation. Hello. What is hypothecation? No idea. What is application? Yes or no? Do you know or you don't know? See, hypothecation, it is a security which is given to the bank. Now, say for example, now suppose there is Mr. A. Mr. A wants to buy four-wheeler. So, he approached to the bank and he is asking bank that, can you san sanction me vehicle loan that I want to buy this particular model, this particular company car. Now, here bank will ask some hypothecation from that individual and suppose if that individual is not having any hypothecation, uh, some security, then bank will do what bank will do. They will say that we will hypothecate your car as a security, as a security. The original documents of car will be kept with bank or if customers want to return that uh, documents, maybe for he wants to go do some business with Ola over so naturally, original papers are required. So he will not submit original papers to the bank. So now what to do in this case? Then bank will ask RC paper, RCTC. Uh, this is the paper RCTC, which is issued by RTO office. The paper issued by RTO office, which is known as RCTC, registration uh, certificate of registration. And uh, TC means Certificate of transfer. On that document, bank will put their rubber stamp that property is hypothecated. Now here, what happens? Suppose that Mr. A, after taking loan from bank, if he approaches to some other person and he is telling that other person that I want to sell this car. Now he may do that. That Mr. A is selling car to say Mr. C, and then uh, Mr. C will pay decided amount to Mr. A. And here, what this may happen, Mr. A will not pay EMI to the bank and he may, he may go, uh, he may disappear, he may go somewhere. Now, in this case, <coughs> bank will suffer from loss, but actually this never happens. When bank hypothecate car, in that case, Mr. A is not in a position to sell that car to Mr. C because bank has hypothecated car and such information and the rubber stamp is being put up on the original papers. So whenever original papers produced by Mr. A, then nobody will the selling and buying transaction will not happen because documents are hypothecated, car is hypothecated. So if you are not having security, enough security, so whatever property you are buying against that loan, the same property can be hypothecated. So this way, the bank reduces the risk in case of loan. So here what happens, suppose if person uh, do not pay EMI on time, then uh, literally bank will forfeit that car from that uh, Mr. A. After forfeiting car, 
bank will sell that car and they will recover their loan amount. So this way, bank is keeping their loan amount in a safe manner. So it is not in a risky, but it is in the safe zone. So this way, bank can manage their potential risk. Now the next line, the three largest risks bank take, which are the three largest risks taken by bank? One is credit risk. What is credit risk? Credit risk is nothing but giving loan to the industry, giving loan to the individual. That is credit risk. Because bank is giving credit. Bank is giving credit means bank is giving loan. That is known as credit. Then market risk. Now what is market risk? In market, there are economical economic cycle is there there is inflation there is a de deflation so that risk is also with the bank now suppose if there is inflation then what happens yeah, in inflation generally people they do not have surplus amount because there is inflation whatever income they earn the entire income is being spent on their day to day expenses so people do not have surplus amount so how they will keep that amount then in bank because they do not have amount So here, bank may face some uh, shortage on account of deposit. Then operational risk. Operational risk. What is this operational risk? A bank has. We have learned credit risk. Credit risk is nothing but whatever loan is given by bank to the industry and the individual. That is credit risk. If person or industry do not pay, then a bank. Is a danger zone. Market is like today. This is nothing but the economical situation, inflation and uh, deflation, and uh, there is a risk involved. Now the third uh, risk is operational risk. Now what is this operational risk? Operational risk, which is at a staff level and at a technology level. Now what is staff level? Now suppose if there is a cashier, and now cashier, if he has done some uh, manipulation with the available cash of the bank. So that is the operational risk involved with, with a bank. But normally uh, above and over cashier, there is a manager and above over manager, again, there is a regional manager. So there is a hierarchy. So one person supervises the subordinate, the subordinate supervises to his uh, down person. So this way, the control is being developed by bank. So an operational risk can be minimized. Another operational risk, like say nowadays, most of the banks, they are having core banking. Am I correct or not? Core banking, that is online banking, net banking. Almost all banks, they have all the public sector bank and private sector bank, Axis Bank, HDFC Bank, ICICI. Everyone has their uh, core banking. They uh, give online uh, banking services to their customers. Yes or not? Do they give or not core banking? Hello? Can you hear me? So yes. Almost all private banks and national banks are having core banking system. Now in this core access banking system, there is an operational risk involved. Like there are some hackers, they hack, they steal information and they do some scam in the bank. They do some uh, malpractices in bank. What they do? Uh, by using some uh, fake uh, password and this thing they transfer amount from one account to another account. And this way, this is the example of operational risk involved with bank. Now, in order to avoid this operational risk, because, because of this operational risk, can you say that not to use computer, not to give to online banking facility? No, this will not, this is not possible also. If you are denying giving a online facility because of this operational risk, then people will not open account with your bank. They will go to some other bank. 
So this is the risk again you know because you are losing your customers. Now what bank will do to minimize this operation is they will hire some ethical hackers and then the ethical hackers will demonstrate to the top management of bank that how the hackers are playing with this system. So that kind of demonstration, that kind of say the illustration demonstration will be given by top management and uh, these uh, uh, ethical hackers will suggest some uh, solution that how to have how to ensure the safety of our uh, software so that kind of uh, uh, what we say some uh, updated software maybe some uh, algorithm uh, based uh, you know, software may be introduced by this ethical hacker and this way bank may also minimizes operational risk so as i told you there are three largest risk bank that is credit risk market risk and operational risk so please remember maybe from the point of view examination you will be asked that what are the three largest risk bank has? What are the three largest risk bank has? So please remember credit risk, market risk, and operation risk. We'll go to the next slide. We'll go to the next slide. Now, four types of risk. Four types of risk. Number one, strategic risk. The example is competitor coming into the market. So that is strategic risk. Now here, if competitor is coming in the market, so can you hold that competitor? Can you say that competitor don't come to here, don't come in the market? Can you say like this? If competitor is entering into the market as a existing uh, banker can you hold such competitor it is not possible you cannot hold a competitor not to enter into the market because the market is open for all and uh, there is no any law also that when uh, banks are there then other people should not open bank so other people are also welcome to open a bank so here no law will uh, stop you not to enter in the market so all competitors are welcome. But whenever competitor enters into the market, now it is our job that how to keep our information in a secret manner. So that kind of training, that kind of say awareness as a top management, you have to create into the lower management as well as middle level management. So this is the strategic uh, planning against strategic risk. So competitors will come, they will uh, start their business and uh, you will have huge problem with such competitors. But we, can, we cannot avoid. That is compliance and regulatory risk. Now in India, Reserve Bank of India, RBI is the regulator uh, for banking. So compliance and regulatory risk. Now what is this? For example, introduction of new rules or legislation. Every after uh, uh, maybe a year or uh, three years, some new amendments are being added to the law, being added to the legislation. And that provision should be observed by rest of the bank. And who introduced these uh, provisions? RBI. Because RBI is the regulator in India. RBI is the regulator in India. All banks are being controlled, are being regulated by RBI. So the compliance and regulate, what is compliance? RBI collects CRR, SLR from each and every bank. Do you know the law form of CRR and SLR? Hello? This is nothing but the compliance part, compliance. CRR and SLR, long form at least, long form. Hello? What is the law form of CRR? What is the law form of SLR? Hello? 
CRR stand for cash reserve ratio. CRR, CRR stand for cash reserve ratio. CRR मुझे कहाँ? What do you mean by CRR? Cash reserve ratio. It means what? Suppose if you are keeping hundred rupees in a bank, part of hundred rupees must be kept with Reserve Bank of India. That is known as CRR, cash reserve ratio. Similarly, SLR. SLR stands for statutory liquidity ratio. Statutory liquidity ratio. That is SLR. Now in our India, uh, we have four percent of CRR and uh, twenty-two percent of SLR. This is the rate, prevailing rate, today's rate. What is the rate for CRR? What is the rate for CRR? Four percent. CRR rate kiti hai? Four percent. And what is the SLR rate? SLR twenty-two percent. So twenty-two and uh, plus four. How much percent? Twenty-two plus four. What is the total? Hello. Hello. Twenty-two plus four. What is the percentage? So twenty percent. Twenty six. Twenty six percent. Now, this twenty twenty six percent of hundred rupees. Now, suppose if you are keeping hundred rupees with Bank of Baroda, so twenty six percent of hundred. That is twenty six rupees. Will be kept with RBI, Reserve Bank of India. Now, how much amount is left with uh, Bank of Baroda? From hundred, they will keep twenty six rupees with uh, Reserve Bank of India. Kiti paisa urle aata? Hundred minus twenty six, kiti urle? Seventy four, correct? Bravo na? Yes, sir. Seventy four. So seventy four rupees are being circulated by Bank of Baroda. And not hundred rupees. To be shambara rupees, it will be still bank of Baroda. But shambara, because service rupee is RBI. I mean, only the seventy rupees bank of Baroda he market made the fillotas. So this way the credit creation happens of a bank. Ata ashes the service rupee. Every bank account number every after hundred rupees. Every bank account number RBI like that. So this is compliance. अतः यह कंप्लाइंस बताएं व्हाट इज़ द रिस्क इन्वॉल्व्ड द रिस्क इज़ दिस रेट्स आर चेंजेस फ्रीक्वेंटली अतः समझा 22 परसेंट यानी 4 परसेंट सीआर है मेबी इन फ्यूचर इट मेबी 3 परसेंट एंड 21 परसेंट मेबी 5 परसेंट एंड से 24 परसेंट सो 5 प्लस 24 29 परसेंट टोटल सो दिस इज़ द रिस्क इन्व कि है दिस कंप्लाइंस सीआरआर एंड एसएलआर रेट बिकॉज़ दिस इज़ डिसाइडेड बाय रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया सो रिजर्व रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया मे एनी टाइम दे कैन मॉडिफाई देयर रूल्स एंड दिस इज़ एप्लीकेबल टू ईच एंड एवरी बैंक बट लेट मी टेल यू व्हाट एवर अमाउंट वी आर कीपिंग विद आरबीआई आरबीआई इंश्योर्स द स्टैट्यूटरी लिक्विडिटी ऑफ अ बैंक बिकॉज़ मेंटेनिंग लिक्विडिटी it is very very important now how to how a bank enjoys this fund suppose if bank faces some financial problem then bank can always seek some financial assistance from rbi and then rbi gives money out of the slr fund out of crr fund this amount can be given to the needy bank needy bank and this way the risk is uh, minimized so this was about the second type of risk compliance and regulatory risk please do remember in compliance and regulatory risk there there is uh, crr there is there is slr which is being uh, imposed by reserve bank of india and then reserve bank bank of india whatever rates into this bank will have to pay not pay actually bank will have to deposit that much amount with reserve bank of india now third type of risk is financial risk financial risk now what is this financial risk interest rate rise on your business loan or non paying customer so this is the financial risk uh, i told you uh, while i explained the definition of uh, risk management in banking 
financial risk is always involved with uh, borrower all borrowers 100% borrower will not pay back to the bank on time there are maybe 1% or 2% customer they or they may delay also so non paying customer non paying customer means a customer who is not paying emi on time he is called as a non paying customer so this is the risk associated with bank ashe khup customer asat bankan kade ki te bankela vel paise yet nahi and recently you must have heard also malya now he has taken loan from a bank and he is he ran away in other countries till today uh, bank could not recover full amount from malya because he is nowhere he is uh, changing his place from one one country to another country so he is a huge customer and uh, now mr malya whatever loan he has taken from the particular bank that bank is facing huge problem because of this non paying customer malya is not paying on time so he is non paying customer so this is the financial risk involved with that particular bank like malya there are many time also not everyone uh, does uh, this thing not to pay bank there are many people who pay on time also then fourth risk that is operational risk operational risk now what is this operational risk example is breakdown so sometime what happens all of a sudden bank system collapses maybe atm services maybe their uh, uh, clearing services gets down and because of that few hours bank transactions can be closed so that is the example of breakdown or theft by key equipment now you might have heard in or you might have read in newspaper also some people they literally break the atm machine and they steal cash from the uh, atm machine atm machine logo akshasha chor logo phodta आणि फोडून त्यातले आतले पैसे ते काढून घेऊन जातात फ्रॉम एटीएम मशीन सो दिस इज द ऑपरेशन रिस्क थे किंवा काही ठिकाणी बँकेवरती दरोडा पडतो सो दे लूट बँक बाय शोईंग सम इक्विपमेंट मे बी सोड ऑर गन दे पुट गन ऑन द शोल्डर ऑफ कस्टमर ऑर स्टाफ अँड देन दे थ्रेड टू द पब्लिक दॅट if you do not pay if you do not give us a, a custody key tijori se chavi then uh, we will kill this person so that kind of threat can be given so this is the operational risk associated with bank operational risk and bank who is expert in managing and who is in a position to understand the possible loss out of this four type of risk that bank definitely they show their performance in excellent excellent manner and bank which is not having a risk management system maybe in respect of strategic or maybe compliance and regulatory or maybe financial or maybe operational search bank suffers from a loss and then their profit comes down and if profit is coming down then uh, salary hike may not be given uh, to their customer sorry to their employees so employees also suffer because of this uh, poor risk management so if you are an employee of bank you must expect that your bank should have good risk management they should have a nice risk management because having up to date risk management 
bank progresses, bank develops. And if bank develops, their employees are also being paid salary on time. They get a good amount of salary after retirement benefit. So they are also happy. Same time, whatever uh, depositors associated with bank, those depositors, they receive their interest on time and their deposit amount is also secure. So they are also benefited. Employees are benefited. Deposit holders are also benefited. And uh, a bank which is located in a particular country, that country government, they are also happy because of this bank performance. If bank is uh, working in a nice manner, directly or indirectly, it con contributes to the uh, economy of a nation. How it contributes to the economy of a nation? Because uh, bank collects deposits, bank uh, sanctions loan. Sanctioning loan to the industry means uh, progressing industry. And because of this sanctioning loan to the industry, more and more employment job opportunities also created by that company. So one uh, decision and then, then, then there are several reflections are there. Several reflections are there. So this way, bank flourishes. If you have appropriate risk management system and if you lack in appropriate risk management system, then definitely loss is there. Then the bank profit will come down. We will not pay a good amount of bank will may not fulfill the obligation sufficient cash. QX in the will not trust over bank. So they, they will start withdrawing their funds may happen. Every bank should uh, classify their risk into this four uh, category. Number one, strategic. Number two, compliance and regulatory. Number three, financial. And last four number, that is operational. So this classification must be done by each and every bank. And if, you're, if you happen to work in any kind of bank, or even if you are a customer of any bank now, just now you answer me that you are a customer of Bank of Bododa. So you should know what are the risk factors associated with Bank of Bododa. So this information you may get through their financial uh, balance sheet or maybe on their website or maybe you may get this information from RBI website also because RBI also publishes uh, NPA information. What is NPA? Non-performing assets. Non-performing assets means whatever loan given by bank to the public, if public do not pay on time, such loan is known as NPA. NPA stands for non-performing assets. That particular asset is not performing. That is why it is known as non-performing. And if non-performing assets rate is higher of a particular bank, then as a third person, we will be cautious about that bank because that bank's NPA is higher. So we will be cautious. So that kind of signals are given or you can uh, uh, study the signal through their website or through referring the RBI website or maybe having some communication with the account holders, those who are having accounts with that particular bank. So they will, uh, they will tell you if you have good relation, definitely they will guide you about that bank. So this strategic risk, compliance, regulatory risk, financial risk, and operational risk, one should, uh, every bank should try to identify, try to understand the potential risk. Now, as I told you, operational risk, breakdown, or theft of a key equipment, maybe sometimes the bank system is being hacked, hack, hacking bank system. Hacking means what? The entire system, our computer system, it is being collapsed and someone is controlling from outside. So this may happen. If you want to 
away from this kind of say things then, uh, frequently even as an individual also frequently you should change your password if you are operating online banking every after three four months or six months you have to change your password and that password should not be shared with anyone it should not be written anywhere and if you are writing anywhere then it is a uh, risky for an uh, individual but if you are if your uh, books uh, or uh, diary if no one is referring or uh, no one is studying then your uh, passwords are safe but publicly if you are keeping that password on a you know open manner or if you are written on the wall of your uh, home or wall of your office password of so and so bank so people will come to know about your password so such operational risk can be managed another thing that many times people they design their password on the basis of their date of birth or their vehicle number and as you know date of birth and vehicle number uh, vehicle number can be known to anyone when you drive your vehicle people are observe your vehicle number so they may try your vehicle number and if it is if they are successful in vehicle number then people may withdraw <coughs> that's so uh, this kind of hackers may withdraw amount from your account so never ever use your vehicle number or your uh, date of uh, birth as a password you have to have combination of your password like say there are special characters then uh, numerical and alphabetical so there is there has to be combination of alpha numeric alphabet numerical and special character special character like say dollar exclamatory marks and sign these are the special characters so one special character then uh, other uh, uh, what we say uh, alphabet and the third one is numerical so there has to be combination in your uh, password so such password it becomes uh, very uh, more difficult for hacker to hack your password and then if it happens so then your amount is safe so that is why never ever use uh, your self birthday or your uh, spouse birthday never ever use your uh, vehicle uh, registration number maybe your scooter or car registration number should not be used because it is easily known by other person so this way operational risk at individual level can be minimized now financial risk from the bank point of view non paying customer now how to avoid this risk now if bank faces that there are non paying customers are increasing so bank may revise their uh, uh, procedure of sanctioning loan which is called as a sop standard operating procedure sop stand for standard operating procedure so that sop can be modified Uh, whenever a person approaches for bank loan, then bank should uh, physically visit to his uh, property if he is uh, say purchasing flat. So, uh, what is the location of that flat? Uh, flat on that uh, area. In that area, bank should pay visit. Their bank means their uh, representative, manager or officer. They should pay visit. Second thing. About that flat, last thirty year search report should be conducted by bank, so that how that property has been transferred from one person to another person, second person to third person, so that the entire uh, detailed information can be obtained, and uh, this information will help bank to identify whether the customer is genuine one or the customer is fake one. if customer is genuine one then surely bank will welcome such customer vice versa if customer is a fake one then bank will state will reject his loan application and they will put that loan application into the dustbin so bank will not entertain with such customer so that way financial risk can be also minimized now can we minimize compliance and regulatory risk and as i told they know this is decided by reserve bank of india so whatever decision 
taken by Reserve Bank of India, each and every bank, if they have taken license from RBI, they should follow their instructions. So there is no choice. Let me tell you, there is no choice. Whatever RBI is giving you instructions, that all instructions, and then uh, strategic risk. Now the question is, can we control a strategic risk? Can we avoid strategic risk? As I told you, strategic risk is nothing but the competitor coming into the market. Now I, I told you, we cannot hold competitor not to, or we cannot ask competitor that not to enter into the market because it is his uh, choice and he has full, uh, what we say, freedom to enter into the market and open bank. He has full freedom subject to uh, follow the guidelines given by RBI. So long he is following guidelines given by RBI, no one can stop that person by from opening up bank. So as such, again, uh, we cannot have control over the strategic risk. We cannot minimize this. And when more and more banks come to the nation, what happens? then there will be the healthy competition. And because of this healthy competition, ultimately customers are benefited. Customers who are having bank account, they are always benefited because of this healthy competition. So I feel that more and more banks should open to your city, more and more banks should open to your state, more and more banks should come to our country, India. So that creates healthy competition in the market. And from the customer point of view, customer gets option that in which bank account to be open. So if options are there, then uh, certainly customer is also benefited. So this way, in strategic risk also, in the real sense, we do not have control over. But uh, in fact, first two, that is strategic risk and compliance risk, as such, we cannot minimize. But last two, we can minimize that particular risk. Definitely we can minimize financial risk and operation risk. So this was about four type of risk. So today in uh, unit number three, we have learned the risk management in banking. That is the logical development and execution of plan to deal with potential losses. That meaning we have learned. And then uh, we also learned that there are three largest risk with bank. And what are these three largest risks? Number one, credit risk, number two, market risk, and number three, operational risk. Then uh, we learn about four types of risk. And then maybe next session, we will uh, learn about different kind of uh, risk, that is credit risk or liquidity risk. What is credit risk and what is liquidity risk that we will study in the next session. So this was about the initial part of unit number three, that risk management in banking and the types of risk in associated with bank. Bank may be any, maybe private bank, uh, nationalized bank or cooperative bank. So these four types of risks are always associated with bank. Please do remember. So before we close today's session, if you have any doubt, you are welcome. Otherwise, we will end the session. In case of any doubt or if you want clarification or explanation of any point, you may ask. You may unmute yourself and you can ask me. Maybe about this first slide or maybe about second slide. If not, no, sir. Okay, then we will close the session. Thank you all. Next part we will study in the next session. Thank you. Good night.